What's happening, everybody, on today's show? Melvin Gordon, a whole lot of Melvin Gordon talk. We break down that situation, what it means for him, for his team, how long is he going to hold out. We, You'll see. you got to stay tuned to find out. And then we break down the entire AFC South, dig into the weeds with the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Tennessee Tides, just how you like it. Stay tuned. All right, all right, all right. It's almost that time of year. The time when I set the foundation for supreme and total dominance at my fantasy football draft. How can I be so confident? Because I used the ultimate draft kit from the fantasy footballers. Man, it updates all off season. So I never worry about using old busted information. Consistency charts auction values, full projections. Oh, baby, this thing's got it all. If you want to keep it 100 for your draft, head to ultimatedraftkit.com and get your copy today. This is Melvin Gordon from the Los Angeles Chargers, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. <laughs> Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Weekend edition. Oh, footballers. Melvin Gordon knows a lot about the weekend <laughs> edition right now. <laughs> uh, we got a great show today. We're going to break down the Melvin Gordon situation, take a deep dive, make sure you know exactly what's happening. Because fantasy owners, Mike, Jason, they are I'm they're freaking out. Oh, it's they're time. They're freaking out. <laughs> so uh, we'll break that down here at the top of the show, let you know what's happening. A lot of news uh, it's exciting. It's fun. Teams are in camp. The injury part isn't as exciting as the hype part of it. Right. But this is the time of year as a fantasy owner of a team preparing for your draft, dynasty league, whatever. You have to be willing and able and capable of laying down thy pride and moving your opinion around a little bit. Yep. Because... You spend a lot of time, months, preparation, and there are going to be things that come out, information that comes out that's going to change the narrative that you've practically written in ink upon your brain. You need to get some white out. Cover it up. It might be ugly. It's hard, right? Whiting out your brain it hurts. And it, yeah, it's <laughs> very difficult. But it, it's it's need a it's drill. Really, it's really true. I mean, we say all the time stay water because you want to not just be so rigid that I like this guy, I like my take that new information doesn't change the equation. We want to help people win in their fantasy football leagues. That's why this time of year what we're doing here is going through all the news that's coming out of every camp. I mean, this is the time where news ramps up and some of it really doesn't matter, and some of it really changes the equation. It's a matter of sifting through that. It's exciting times. It is, and drafts are coming. People are getting ready to go, and, you know, the Melvin Gordon situation will start at the top, and uh, you can follow us at the FF Ballers on Twitter. We'll post breaking news, things that are happening. We'll retweet stories that are relevant to fantasy owners. But I want to start at the top with Melvin Gordon because uh, I'll say a couple things. One, look – I still think that something gets done with Melvin Gordon. Okay. I still believe that. That being said, the news is trending in a negative direction from Melvin Gordon right now. And so as a result of that, the first thing I did when I got into the studio today, had a bunch of players I needed to tweak for uh, my rankings. And one of them was Melvin Gordon. He needed to be adjusted. Because yeah, I moved him down too. Our rankings right now are prescriptive for your draft as if it's happening right now. Even if, if Gordon signs in two weeks, he will be adjusted back up. As of right now, he's somewhere in the lower uh, 17, I don't remember where he landed, 17 to 20 at running back now. Because if I drafted today, I don't have enough confidence in spending a first-round pick in him. 
No, you, you should not have confidence to spend a first or a second round pick because here is the lay of the land for Melvin Gordon. It is different than Le'Veon Bell. Last year, Le'Veon Bell was a he, franchise. He was supposed yes. to be franchise tagged. He did not sign that contract, so he technically was never under contract, never facing fines, which Melvin Gordon will now face a what, a thirty thousand dollar fine per day per day that he skips of training camp. So that's money that will be taken away from him. Uh, Le'Veon Bell could could hold out and then become a free agent. His his path was clear. There was nothing in the way. Melvin Gordon still eventually has to show up because he has played four seasons in the NFL, so he is eligible to be a free agent. However, he is still bound to the confines of the fifth-year option. So he is under contract. So and, if he And says, if he skips the year, guess he's what? a fifth-year option guy. He's under contract next, next year. year. So the only way that holding through the season would benefit Melvin Gordon is if he was certain it would force their hand to trade him Otherwise, he's in the same situation only without about a million dollars worth of fines that's out of his pocket, plus $5.6 million, which is the fifth-year option price for Melvin Gordon. His best bet, logically, the way I understand the contract, is to, if you're going to play this out, if you're going to miss games, you show up halfway through the year, you accrue your season, and you move on without being a charger going into the next year. The general manager has come out. Melvin Gordon has come out. They have both dug in. The The opinion out there is that it Oogly. could lead into the season. The Chargers are not going to be the same team without Melvin the, Gordon. The Chargers can't afford to. I mean, it's just it, – the, the thing is, is when you really look at this just from a logic and team-building perspective, the Chargers, especially with their current stadium situation, they're not filling a 25,000-seat stadium. They cannot – afford to pay Melvin Gordon what he wants so this is going to be an inroads that lasts a little while and Tom Telesco their GM has said he's a charger like we're, we're not looking at trading him and there's not a lot of teams out there with cap room that would sign him to a big traded deal the only team that makes sense to me doesn't even have a GM the Houston Texans would be a great landing spot but they don't have a GM right now to work a deal so this is an ugly situation it is, I, and we'll see what happens. You know, the second he agrees to terms, shows up at camp, oh, he'll be he's adjusted, my number five running back. Adjusted at that point. right back up. But fantasy owners have questions about planning for a Melvin Gordon right. situation. You might have Melvin Gordon. They want to know: Do I invest in Eckler or Justin Jackson? You also might not have Melvin Gordon, and you might remember last year when James Conner was a eleventh to undrafted type of guy, and everybody that did take the shot on him paid off in fantasy victories because Connor was the guy all year long. If I could tell you today, let's just presume Gordon comes back week nine or eight. If you could have a guy for eight weeks and get them at a value, who do you want? Do you want Eckler? Do you want Jackson? I want Jackson for sure because Eckler, look, they're both going to get a lot more work. I mean, Eckler will get more work without Melvin Gordon, but the difference for Justin Jackson between – him with Melvin Gordon there, which he's going to be barely utilized, and him with Melvin Gordon gone, he's going to be the primary downs back. I think we've seen that. They've talked him For up. For Jackson? Yes. Oh, well, you e think it won't be Eckler? I, th Eckler I started, do not think it'll be Eckler. Eckler's but, got first team reps in, in training camp. But so look far. at look at the, the draft price difference. Eckler is not only already starting high, but as Melvin Gordon stays out, he's going to continue to be the guy – drafted early whereas Justin Jackson is free in drafts if you're drafting now I mean well, get him I would take somewhere. the counterpoint though that if you wanted to take it with a different angle Austin Eckler should have prolonged value yes. through the duration of yes. the return so if you're going to reach for a player like if you wanted to say hey I'm going to reach a half a round or a round for Austin Eckler on the chance I get seven games of him being heavily utilized and then he's still relevant that's kind of the count. I'm not but, saying I would do that necessarily, but but reaching for Eckler, if you're going to be reaching in a couple weeks, fourth that's going to be yeah the fourth, yeah. the fifth round. You're you're giving up good options. Reaching for Justin Jackson is like I'm going to take him in the ninth, the tenth round. That's a that's a big reach. He's in the thirteenth right now, but of course ADP is skewed because this is new information. Yeah, that will definitely change. I it's a tough situation because much like every one of these holdouts, the Lev Bell situation last year. You're just you're, you're there's a level of gamble that's taking place. We're not yes. contract attorneys. 
Okay. Right. We explain the situation as best as we know it, but there are complexities. There is leverage to be had. I think it's going to come down to Melvin Gordon laying down his pride a little bit. If he wants to lower that price tag, maybe he just wants to do what David Johnson wanted last year. Get some more guaranteed money. David Johnson was a holdout threat in quotes before right. he came to an agreement last season. He was in a similar situation as Melvin Gordon. They came to terms. Jason, you certainly don't believe that the Chargers are going to open their money bags at all. I'm just – I hate dealing with these situations. So uh, let me ask you this, Jason, because uh, I mean, we all have the stance that we aren't drafting Kareem Hunt because we know that he has an eight-game suspension. He won't be back until week 10 because of the bye week. Melvin Gordon takes us the distance. Mm -hmm. He misses – Eight games. Are you? Do you have the same stance as no, you are I, not drafting Melvin Gordon? No, I would. I would still draft Melvin Gordon because the, the giant difference is when Kareem Hunt comes back. Is how involved is he? Is he the okay. guy? It's Nick Chubb. You're having a, a, a you know a guy that's you're going to get in week ten who, who might be a backup running back that you held all year. When Melvin Gordon comes back, he is the Melvin Gordon star. And and let's be honest, if he misses about four or five games. Maybe that's good for him because he usually misses about four or five games. So uh, then I'll be like, oh, now he can stay healthy the rest of the do way. Do you have a round? I mean, Not this, yet. this is all new information. So do you have a round where you're, where in your head you think, yeah, I'll take the risk that I'm going to be stashing a running back for eight weeks? Like if, well, I mean, it, right now it's it, you have to only go on what information we have now. So if I was drafting today and I don't know that he's missing eight weeks, I don't think. He will miss that much, maybe f four weeks in. They work something out. Um, I, I would probably be looking at Melvin Gordon like, man, f fourth round, but he'll never get to me right now. Yeah, for right it, right now for me, fourth round is I would I would just do it because the, the guys going in the fourth round, assuming that I missed carry on Johnson, if we're speaking strictly running backs, they're all shaky as the fourth round running backs always are. So fourth round – I would. I think I would smash. So the, you're on the, the clock there, button. Melvin Gordon, Derrick Henry. You're taking Gordon. Yeah, I think I would take Gordon. That's just what I would do right now. I'm the most optimistic, but the news has not been great. Posturing on both sides. We'll continue to track it. We're not even into August yet. And a couple uh, things to get out there before we get into the rest of the news. FootClanGiveaway.com. A couple days left. Signed Pat Mahomes jersey. We're giving one away from PristineAuction.com. Um, that's probably the best giveaway we've ever had. Uh, yeah, for, yes. on a one-off. Like yeah. a one-item thing, a signed Pat Mahomes jersey. It's pretty awesome. And um, I will say, if you have already entered, we did recently add, we updated a way to to get a couple points for the raffle. Yes, for so. to, to win. We did. We added another one in there. You can nominate us for the streamies. Yes. And um, you heard Matthew McConaughey. Oh, oh I heard him. At I want, the top of the show. Have you guys, look. Would you consider just playing that music over the entire podcast? I was gonna say it's really the music when it hits. All right, yeah, yeah. all right, all right. Because that's that, pretty good. Like I am instantly at ease. Yes. I am mellowed out. I'm ready, man. No tilting. You can't tilt with that music. No, on. no. It's really good. Which I need in my life. <laughs> when you're making some Melvin Gordon decisions, you got to yeah. have that going on in the background. But he was talking about the ultimate draft kit. You can get it. Uh, right now at ultimatedraftkit.com, instant access, app access, huge updates coming to the app. Um, you're going to be able to mark players off for your draft. Star them, kind of uh, mark them like yeah. avoid. Yeah, you can draft them, you can hide them, you can do m many more things that give you functional uh, utility of the rankings. And we're just uh, upgrading and changing that each and every day. Ultimatedraftkit.com, a dollar goes... To a dollar of every UDK goes directly to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. And I want to say this before we get into the news. Um, we've had a, a, some people give us feedback on, on supporting St. Jude. We had some people that made a donation to St. Jude in, um, in our honor, so to speak, for oh, that's our, awesome. our partnership with them. That happened this morning. And there was no way for me to write that person back and say thank you, but thank you for thank everybody you. that's been supportive. Awesome. Because when you, when you came to a live show and you bought a VIP ticket, you were supporting St. Jude. And so there are a lot of you out there that have made that decision to, to support them, and we, uh, we're we happy to be partnered with you and with them. Uh, or we'll get into the news. I just have a little bit of uh, breaking. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. 
This is the fun part of it. Put it on record. We are recording this show, the Saturday show, middle of the day, Friday. Right. So if something happens beyond this breaking news from Mike, you oh, will I understand hope, why. Well, I hope Melvin Gordon signs. <laughs> no, no, that it's not that. It's just it, it's another piece for our injury section, so I'll bring it up when we get there. Uh, also, officially, no Zeke Elliott at camp today. So that is another situation that um, – a couple other holdouts going on. Michael Thomas, officially a holdout, did not show up. They are reportedly close yes. about within a million dollars and uh, on a five-year extension. A lot easier to throw – Per year. A lot easier to throw a lot of money at a top-level wide receiver than a top-level running back. So, yeah, I, I expect Thomas back soon with a new deal. He's just taking a very long Uber drive to camp. They, they need a little extra time, circle the block, right. see if they can knock it out. Zeke did not join the Cowboys, did not show up at camp. We'll see. He should be back soon. We'll see what happens there. A couple of small signings. So, r real quick, I, I expect him back. But if you're drafting today... I'm still drafting him with full confidence. So, like, he's my one. He's my one on one. And right. I, w I would. Would you tie break Saquon or Camara or McCaffrey? Would that be? Yeah. Does Zeke go number four for you now in right, that tier? Yes, that's what I was going to bring up. Right now, Zeke okay. would have that little minuscule knock. Yeah, I mean, it, they're all great, so I'd rather avoid the risk. Right, makes sense. Packers signed Corey Grant. Running former backs. running back of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Yeah, likely a special teams move, but we'll see. Corey Grant, when what when he was he's actually, electric. When he was dun, healthy, dun, dun, man, dun, he dun, was dun, a dun. lightning bolt. Yeah, Dolphins signed Alan Hearns. Good for you, Alan. Uh, Wait, where's the, where's that drop? Uh, we need it. This I'm I'm on the hunt. The, look, uh, the perfect situation for this. For what? For I don't know. Maybe we would call it something uh, like. Uh, Mediocre signing of the week. I don't think the weight was worth it. It was. It certainly was not. But it's. We got a lot of drops. This is a yeah. hunting situation over here. So this is. I have been bullish on Albert Wilson's outlook if he is healthy, which he is. He's like practicing on the side, getting planned days off. We will see what's going on with that injury. The, the Alan Hearns signing, I think, is a backup plan that they just need to bolster the depth in, in case Albert Wilson is not ready to go anytime soon. Alan Hearns stinks. All right, Broken Thumbs Club. That's what my uh, show doc oh, says. Man. Julian Edelman, Sterling Shepard. Edelman's break happened a few weeks ago. Means his recovery is underway. He should only miss a few more weeks. He'll be fine for the season, says Ian Rappaport. Sterling Shepard just fractured his thumb in practice on Thursday. Uh, Pat Shermer says he's not concerned. Confirmed this morning, no surgery. The timetable for this recovery, according to Pro Football Doc, puts him. He says this is a realistic uh, recovery. He should be good to go for Week One. But it does. I mean, look, you're you're missing camp. You're missing uh, all you know all the reps. Uh, so it it puts you behind the eight ball. Corey Coleman. Giants wide receiver, same practice, towards yeah. ACL, done for the year. No Corey Coleman, no Sterling Shepard for a while. Evan Ingram season. Mm. I'm I just saying, I, it, yeah. you know. I don't think Coleman really affected Ingram too much. If you are looking at deep, if you're if you're going, look, deep where you're you're flipping the rocks upside down, looking for grubs, looking for just nasty bacteria. <laughs> And you're in it. Look, it's dynasty. It's deep. I in one of my leagues, I did go and grab Cody Lattimore, who should move into the wide receiver three position. Oh, the wide maybe. receiver three look, for Eli Manning. Uh, like yes. I'm saying, maybe. Don't worry. Fifth target in the offense uh, behind uh, the oh, tight end and true. the running back. Yeah, you don't need to do that. Just we're just saying, who does this actually affect? Looking it, for grubs. If you're in a, I will say, if you, <laughs> in fairness, if you're in a 32 team uh, keeper league, yeah. then I right, would 28 right. starting spots. Yeah. Um, Calvin Ridley and Deshaun Hamilton both tweaked their hamstrings. Just pay attention. See if they come back to practice soon. If these things linger, Jason's brought it up before, hammies, bad hammies can – Yeah, ruin a season. Yeah, it can be bad. It is so. the, it's the one injury where this time of year, like right now, even though it's so early, I, I make a little note and I say, 
put a little dot next to someone's name and worry about them or, or you know, I'll up their risk rating in the ultimate draft kit because they come back. They, it's just hard. You you rest and you always think you're okay and then you come and then you, you go and you start practice, you get in a game and you tweak it again. They certainly can and I would say a guy to compound that risk rating would be somebody that has a history of that kind of an injury as well. You know, Ridley, Hamilton – up and coming players we need to pay attention to. So uh, before we get into the more positive news, the the players I was alluding to, both Derrick Henry and AJ Brown left practice early. Uh, the head coach Vrabel is, says he's not concerned, but they left practice early, did not come back. All right, other news: Hopkins, he's off. He's the, back. Baby. He's off the pup. He's already back. Woo. Woo. Chris Carson. This one's interesting. Confirms he's 100% so, entering training camp. Took a 40-yard screen pass and practice one to the house. Full sprint. Healthy. That's ready to go. Great. That's great news. Chris Carson right now is undervalued in drafts. Remember he, I told you I took Aaron Jones out of my my guys? Oh, oh, hey now. Jay Gruden says Darius Geis won't be limited at training camp. That was a hamstring injury after the big injury last year. Does this make you look at him uh, again? Well, we'll see what that actual ADP is looking like. I mean, you had the the coach speak of of, of Gruden was talking up Darius Geis and his pass catching ability, saying that they didn't feature him enough in college. We'll see, man. If if the draft price is right, <laughs> maybe. But he's close to just off the board completely. All right, Buccaneers coach Bruce Arians says Chris oh, Godwin quote yes. get will that, get the train going, man. Come. <laughs> Off the field ever. He's not coming off. He's kick. He's kicking when when they oh, yeah. the, when they punt. He's playing defense now. He's just he's literally not allowed to come off the field. Yep, and much to the chagrin of his friends and family. But Godwin, hey, does this matter? I mean, this is just no. hype. This is just hype. This is this is Bruce. It, yeah. Look, it I remember Bruce. Doesn't matter because we knew who he was going to play. Yeah, Bruce talks up all of his players and and gives astronomical numbers. He'll say something like, "I want him to touch the ball forty times a game." It's like, well, is that for a, back with the uh, the Andre Ellington? <laughs> yes. yes. I, I mean, yeah. You this is hype that you can ignore, but Chris Godwin is great, and there's a lot of extra targets to go around. He's moving to that Fitzgerald slot position. That it wasn't just Fitzgerald, uh, Heinz Ward. I mean, there, there's a lot of the slot position's always been good, and I am a big believer in Chris Godwin this year. But this, that the never coming off the field is just a fluff <clears throat> piece. Tampa may end up in the annals of history as the hype land of the past five years if things don't go the right way for Jameis Winston, Chris Godwin this year. Winston is the problem for Godwin. A hundred percent. So Godwin is great. Kalen Village took the first snap at running back during team drills on both Thursday and Friday. Comments? Yeah, this is this is definitely interesting. If because this is this is not the normal Miami beat reporters, which look that was you, happening. About like Mike Kosicki, whoa, one-handed catch. You oh, want to talk the last oh. five years, the annals of hype machine? That's that's in Miami. For sure, but yeah, this isn't that. This, this is this is just reporting of play by play of what's going on. It was at, he worked with the ones for hours. Now, Kalen Balaj or uh, Kenyon Drake did get in with the ones, but that was hours later. Um, and then they were both on the field together today. It would right now. I have Kalen Balaj projected for more carries, but I have Drake with more passing work. That's and he ends up as more valuable. I, I definitely this is one that is making me take a second look and adjust because I'm a big believer in the talent of Kenyon Drake. And you gonna book a room? Uh at the Balaj at the, at, <laughs> Yes. Uh, yeah. I mean I uh, didn't tweak anything because I had them both for 175 carries. I still think that's the case. Yeah, you know, my belief in Balaj affected hype train for Drake more than it did thinking Balaj is going to set the world on fire on an offense that's not necessarily going to be amazing. Um, but I did invest in Balaj about a month ago, picked him up in Dynasty League, uh, needed a running back, thought he was worth a shot. Hopefully it pans out. Yeah, if you're drafted now, he's a great value super It late. could just yeah. lower the ADP of Kenyon Drake, Jason, if you're interested in Kenyon Drake in like the late fifth or something. Uh, I mean, he's in the fifth now, so if it lowers him and he can drop down to like the sixth. All right. All right. Yeah. I I'm probably still in on Drake in the fifth, but – 
I can uh, I can tell you right now. I probably shouldn't be. I'll say that. <laughs> I'll say that. Like Foot Clan, don't follow follow my lead on Carry On Johnson. Don't follow my lead on Kenya Drake. I can at least see the uh, you know the the truth out there. Um, that was today's news and notes. I can tell you right now, it's going to be a longer episode today. We've got the AFC South right. on the show. Um, make sure you check out the Sleeper app. It's a great fantasy sports platform. They're always working on it. Uh, we had the privilege of having them to our live show in San Francisco yeah. and, and, and great chatting people. with them, and they're working hard to make the best platform that exists on the planet. Yeah, and before we jump into the AFC South, I want to thank today's sponsor, Manscaped, number one in men's below-the-belt grooming. Look, fellas, I gotta, we got to be real here. We got to talk about this. You got to get your groom on. You got to th- make sure things are tight, keeping it right, and they got their lawnmower 2.0. I've taken a ride on the lawnmower 2.0, and it is a smooth <laughs> ride, fellas. It's smooth. <laughs> it's safe. They are not joking when they say they've redesigned the electric trimmer. That's not gas-powered, right? No, okay. no, it is. It is not. <laughs> it's powered with their proprietary skin-safe technology. The trimmer won't nick or snag. That's what I'm telling you. It's smooth. It's like butter accidents are a thing of the past with Manscaped. And you don't want to use the same trimmer on your face that you're using. Yep. No, yep. No, 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 no. And you're already, you get you get the deodorant for the armpits. There's other areas of your body that can spruce, cause a ruckus. Up. Yeah, you got to. And, and look, Manscaped is there for you. And right now you can get 20% off plus free shipping and a free travel bag with the code FOOTBALLERS at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code FOOTBALLERS. Look, your body will thank you. Speaking of causing a ruckus, uh, yes, this deal that we've got from our other sponsor of today's show, Shady Rays, caused a bit of a ruckus on social uh, because the deal was too good, and it that's is not a joke. Too good. Um, so if you need sunglasses, which most everybody does, and if you're in Arizona, it's do you live where there's sun? Where there's a sun? <laughs> Look, I've been a Shady Rays. Um, I, I bought Shady Rays for like three years before they ever booked anything on the show. I love them because I lose my glasses. And they have great glasses, and they actually last. And you can go get a pair of glasses, and if you lose them, you just pay shipping and handling, and they'll replace them for you. If you break them or if you lose them, it's like sunglasses insurance, and I like that a lot. It's dad proof. It's Yeah, exactly. <laughs> doesn't matter what happens to them. Um, you can't say that about any other provider, and this is the deal that people are freaking out over. Um, this is the best deal they got. You use the code FOOTBALLERS at ShadyRays.com, you get half off two or more pairs. So you basically get two pairs for $45 with the code footballers, and then if you lose them or break them, they replace them. You get them again. So it's pretty much the best deal in town. Use the code footballers at ShadyRays.com. Let's get into the divisional breakdown. Let's get divisional. Hey, Judge, how you doing? Excellent. How you doing, Andy? I'm doing good. Is this our second to last Superman divisional does good. breakdown? <laughs> yes, sir. So we're almost through all of them? Yeah, we've got the NFC South yeah. to wrap it up. Why do we start with the AFC? Why does the NFC get the second position? Huh? Just went alphabetical. Yeah, right A, on that man. One. Mm. It's easy. Sim- simple as that. Good okay. answer. Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> all right. Well, if you haven't heard any of the previous episodes, the previous divisional breakdowns, you can check them out on the podcast, uh, whatever, you're, whatever app you're listening to, you just... Just, You've got one day left before we take them down. No, no, we're keeping them up. Go now, this hurry. Year. So uh, check them out. We're in the AFC South. Last year, the Texans won the division, eleven and five. The Colts, ten and six. The Titans, nine and seven. So three teams above five hundred. And the Jags, well, they let you down. Five and eleven. Interesting division. Interesting fantasy storylines for each of these teams. Last year, the Texans, and that's who we're going to start with. The Texans had the eighth best rushing yards per game. They could run the football. Deshaun Watson helps that quite a bit. Um, Bill O'Brien and company, what are we expecting from this offense this year? I'm most excited to see three competent, talented pass catchers on the field at the same time for Deshaun Watson. DeAndre Hopkins, Will Fuller, Kiki QT. If you told me right here, right now, today, I'm going to make a statement. It's going to seem outlandish. Oh, man. Are you going to beat me to it? If those three guys, if you gave me 16 games, Deshaun Watson will be the number one quarterback in fantasy football. I was just going Were to you gonna say I the same thing. I was literally going to say if all three guys stay healthy, Watson 
is one of the guys that can challenge Mahomes and end up as the number one quarterback. He he is he's a great player. He runs the ball third most rushing attempts and third most rushing yards at the quarterback position. That gives you a monster boost on a weekly basis. And what is what's wild is how often they let him throw the ball inside the ten. I mean, yes. forty two attempts inside the ten. That's the fifth most in the league. Like for for what what you feel like the Houston Texans there and Bill O'Brien his DNA as a head coach of of I'm gonna we're gonna grind and no they're they're letting Deshaun Watson do what he has and to do to score to add to your point it's working yes he throws a touchdown every 3.8 pass attempts in the red zone yes so not only does he attempt them they work out it's the second highest percentage in the league only Baker Mayfield was better in the red red zone last year on those attempts the the Houston Texans opened their camp this week the first uh article that I read the five takeaways from a great beat reporter there the number one takeaway was on the goal line work the red zone inside the five was how good Deshaun Watson was he was tearing everyone up just snapping the ball quick pass every single time a touchdown Deshaun Watson has the dual threat way more so. Like, I know Pat Mahomes can run, but his rushing ability in fantasy, I am very excited. You want to talk about, okay, Hopkins is here. He's great. But the player I'm most excited about is Deshaun Watson. The only problem is, of course, he plays quarterback. He plays quarterback. And right. in fantasy, it's just not worth drafting a quarterback early when you need multiple running backs and wide receivers. And there's. 20 good quarterbacks but I I want Deshaun Watson I need to play in a in a two QB league so I could take Watson so the huddle doesn't have Houston using either of their first and second round tackles that they invested draft capital in as part of that starting offensive line they probably should therefore they I mean they're basically dead last in the league as what? an offensive line and they have a quarterback that is comfortable outside the pocket and moving around. He also took the most sacks in football last year. Exactly. You can't, can't keep doing that. So they invested. They invested two uh, early picks on tackles. And Matt Khalil is back, and he was dominating in camp. That's their left tackle. He was injured and is oft injured. So whether or not he can stay healthy oft is a – not dominating, too, in his past, but it, it would be – If he's better. healthy, he better. is a major upgrade for them. No doubt. No doubt. Um, so – Getting to the receiving core, so we say all that about Watson without a fantasy prescription. He's somebody that, you know, who's being drafted ahead of him at the quarterback position right now? Like, what's I his can, ADP? Is I he can a, pull that up. Is he, he is, in the fifth? Yeah, he's in the back of the fifth. Back of the uh, fifth round. So Deshaun Watson too high to take in, the, in, the, in the late sixth. He drops to the late sixth, early seventh round with the potential of being a quarterback that can be number one. With healthy wide receivers, do you start to look at that sneaky value? Yeah, it's I'm, not Mahomes in the third; it's Watson in the seventh. If it, I'm in a, a a late round league where you know, like we are, right. our league, we everyone prescribes late round quarterback, so everybody's ADP is pushed. I think that's really common. A lot of the people listening will play in those leagues. If Deshaun Watson was in the seventh round, I'm taking him for sure or, because he is yeah. going behind Andrew Luck, Aaron Rodgers, and I've got him right now as my number two quarterback. Okay, so transitioning to the pass catchers, we know DeAndre Hopkins is DeAndre Hopkins. There's not much to say about him. He's good. Draft him. He's great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, really, we don't need to discuss. He's one well, of the best three wide receivers, and he will stay that way. Yeah, the the, the thing to discuss is simply – does it, it affect him if the other receivers are it, healthy? It does. It, w it will definitely take targets away from him. I mean, he The past two years has been a 30-plus percent target market share guy, but last year Will Fuller had 45 targets, Kiki had 41. I mean, th those numbers would would go up if those players are actually back on the field. Last so, year we were saying the same thing. Now yes. we, we suffered the injuries again, but we were saying the exact same thing about his target share. He probably deserves that target share. Yeah, and he's going to get it. Hopkins, I mean, the, the target share might go down because of Kiki, but those aren't the valuable fantasy targets. Those are the short-range stuff. In games that Will Fuller has played, Hopkins has, uh, at least last season, he, he had more fantasy points in the games that Will Fuller was playing than when Will Fuller was injured. I have no worries whatsoever 
about Hopkins. I don't think anybody does. No, well, not being – he'll still be elite. But the, the question just becomes, is he your number one guy or sure. number three? Sure. That's Will Fuller is going at 7-10 right now. When he's been on the field with Watson, he's been incredible. It hasn't happened very often. Kiki QT, I am shocked by this ADP. Absolutely shocked. The fact that Kiki is going at 907, which seems mind-blowing to me for a PPR guy, to go two rounds ahead of somebody like Anthony Miller in Chicago blows my mind. Like, I don't like that value on Kiki at all. Oh, you in the ninth? No. Oh, see, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with it. Because the best-case scenario for Kiki, I know he may be the, the peppered guy, but the, the touchdown upside isn't there with Kiki. So I guess I'm just a little surprised because he's not been I – and, you know, he played six games in his career. I'm surprised – that he's there personally. I, th I think it's just because of what you saw in the first five games obviously as a rookie the first five games before he went back down to injury once he got on the field he was on 125 target pace uh for 83 receptions 874 yards as a rookie so people are saying if he takes that step forward but I I actually like if it's a full PPR he's obviously more interesting but I do agree with Andy I think that um how many of those games was Will Fuller a part of was it all of them uh no, no. Just a so so we have fuller variable, and sure. then even if that projection that you just said came true, it's not that. Are you great. happy with eighty and eight hundred? No, but you're hoping that that as a rookie in was, the ninth you know, round, takes yeah. that second, that second. I would be uh, PPR. I'm. I, it's a different story. Hey, even even in a half point PPR, I mean, like around the ninth round, that's where you're just starting to take your shots on guys, and and I if Kiki, like I have him down for just over twenty percent of the of the targets, and that's. It, that's very valuable for of the efficient quarterback that Sean Watson Right has. now, Ke I mean, Kiki's going around MVS. Give me MVS all day long. Sutton is going behind Kiki. Westbrook, Samuel, Tate. I don't want any of those guys. I don't want, yeah, that, I don't yeah, want fair. him above those guys. Fair. D-Jax. Here's a good one, Mike. Dante Moncrief or Kiki? Ooh. Moncrief is that's, two rounds later yeah, than Kiki. Yeah, definitely a team – Team makeup okay. question for me. Yeah, I, we don't have to talk about Kiki anymore. Sure. Why do we feel so bleh when we draft Lamar Miller? So I I took a, a look <laughs> I, I at, love this. at Lamar Miller because it's insane. We we all are like, you know, Lamar Miller, he's been so bad. He since sucks. He is the worst. He we was supposed to be good when he got to Houston, and then he sucked. And since joining the Houston Texans, he is – Averaging the fifth most touches at the running back position. Uh, that, he has, wait, that's really good. Yeah, he has the fifth most rushing yards in the NFL. Wait, that's super. <laughs> but here's the problem. Here is the problem for Lamar Miller. Five carries inside the five last year. Alfred Blue had four. <laughs> and just for some context of guys who I do not like, freaking Doug Martin had 11 carries inside the five. Like, the, inside main, the five is Deshaun Watson territory. Main running backs get carries. The, like the volume that Lamar Miller sees, he should be at least at double digit. Uh, w when you break things down, he should be seeing double digit carries inside the five. But they don't. They go. They go to Deshaun Watson. The cumulative numbers are not helpful for fantasy because the same numbers apply to someone like Jordan Howard, who was thrown away for a six round pick. He's like the third most rushing yards over the last three years. They're not that helpful because it just means, guess what? Congratulations. You're a running back who had a starting job and stayed healthy for three straight years. Yeah. It, that, that does mean Which, something. Now, it now, does mean something. Now it does. That, and, and he helped me last year. Miller yeah. helped me a ton last year. The reason, and Mike brought it up, it's the touchdowns, right? Because if you look since he's been a Houston Texan, his 16-game pace, he averages over 1,000 yards rushing every single year. It's just he also averages only five touchdowns. Right. So I think where he's going in drafts right now is great. I mean, look, he's not going to be a top five, top ten running back. But he's going to be an RB2 that's helpful to your fantasy team, and he's being drafted very late because he doesn't have the upside. People are swinging their picks on, you know, pushing their chips in on someone who is much more volatile. They don't know what they're going to be yet, so they're excited about the possibility. If you build your roster knowing, look, a guy like a Lamar Miller in the mid middle late rounds is a good plug-and-play RB2 or RB3, great. 
much more stable than anybody going around him. Before so, and after Lamar Miller is got James White, Tariq Cohen, Tevin Coleman, Rashad Penny, Daryl Henderson, Darius Geis. The only one that if you made me bet my house on 200 carries, I'm only doing it right. with Lamar Miller. Now, speaking of the stability, Deontay Foreman, the backup running back, will be now a full year removed from his ACL – or apologies, his Achilles tear – uh, which it's eventually. I mean, it took him out last year. He was he was absolutely nothing. The team let out for Blue go. They like the depth chart is really the Mar Miller and Deontay Foreman. Are you taking a uh, a late round shot on Foreman at all to see Week One? Maybe he gets in there and he surprises you with his workload. I would love to take a late round shot. I know shot you're on I'm talking to Andy. Be I'm not talking to the Foreman truther because I I believe Foreman is a great running back and the ability to take over the backfield I think exists. The problem is he's in the ninth round right now. Like that's not that right. late. I I feel like Deonta Foreman who last year had negative 7 rushing yards coming off of this injury as a backup he sh he shouldn't I like like I want to take the shot the They'd same way with Balage. Balage sitting in the 13th round. Right. Even before the news of him being, you know, they should be going around the same place. So I'm not sure why Foreman's draft cost is so high right it's now. It's because of the meh feeling of Lamar Miller. Yeah, that and I, I do it. think that the team would love to hand the job off or part of the job off to somebody more that they'd view as more explosive and dynamic than Lamar Miller. Problem is, we don't know if Foreman can do it coming off the injury. He sure looked like he was going to before. We got to move on. The Colts at ten and six. The Colts start on the road this year. A couple games, uh, tough one to start the season against the Chargers. Then they go to Tennessee, another good defense. That'll be an interesting. Uh, it will. We might be buying low on uh, on some Colts after a couple of weeks. Then they come back home against Atlanta and Oakland, looking sunny. That looks a lot better. Looking sunny for those. But look, this is a great passing offense. Sixth in football, two seventy eight a game. It's also an offense that has an interesting amount of vacated targets 23 percent gone a lot of that has to do with just injuries and turnover at the wide receiver position outside of ty hilton the wide receiver core hilton funches paris campbell the ever-present deon kane <laughs> off-season hype train yes. of, of irrelevance i think the gm ballard there just really wants to be right that he was good like it's going to be irrelevant he knows it's going to be irrelevant but he's like yeah see see he's good i drafted well right now does it go does, ahead does the name deon kane being so close to dean kane uh, right superman, former superman, superman does yeah. that have any impact on the way that people it think about certainly him? makes him more handsome i mean uh, you know dean kane he he, yeah. uh, he upped that bar. You you carry that name. <laughs> Dean and Kane. and Dean <laughs> Kane was setting the bar for all of us yeah. in the mid nineties. <laughs> I remember <laughs> still remember when Dean Kane stepped into the Monday night football booth for uh Wait, for a game and what? was like a guest. How did I miss this? This was at the peak of no! Superman uh, with uh with Terry was, Hatcher. With Terry yeah. Hatcher and Dean Kane. He stepped in. Show. They interviewed Dean Kane. That, that show was fabulous. Was and I thought how cool that Superman was in the booth. <laughs> oh, he could for see Monday the field Night Football. so well. Oh, he really could. I mean, it's unbelievable. Um, for review, we go to Dean Kane. <laughs> the, the, the kryptonite here is that Dean <laughs> Dion Kane appears to be approximately eighth in yeah. the in the kind of pecking order. Hilton, Funches, Campbell, Ebron, Doyle, Hines, at a minimum above Kane. And so this team and maybe Mo Ali Cox, this team is, is gonna be great. So good. I mean, this is the team that I believe is, you know, right now I've got them as my Super Bowl champions. I oh, think now you've gone to champion. Yeah, no, I so that's not, wow. just, not just appearance. Before okay. it was I, it was you thought, you know, yeah, they'd right now, get there. Now, now they're they you've given them the title. Look, they have a great underrated head coach in Frank Reich he is uh, he's fantastic uh the only question at all is Andrew Luck and his health right now he's out with the calf injury and I know they're taking it slow mm -hmm. and easy because they saw what happened to Kevin Durant and they don't want to rush him back but this is the same calf injury that held him out of OTAs like a month and a half ago that's not normal even for a heavy calf strain to be this long of a process so it is 
I, I'm not worried about it. I just said I think they're going to be great and win the, the Super Bowl, but keep an eye on it. If another month from now he's dealing with a calf issue, that's weird. Worth bringing up, I would contend that their defense would be the, the one thing that could get in the way of that Super Bowl title. They were good last year. Um, yeah, they were all right. They were all right. Uh, that To me, they got that's what's got to step up, keep protecting Andrew Luck, what a transformation between two years for this team. Yeah. Not with, just with the offensive line. With but Ryan Kelly and Quentin Nelson, things and I would say things Fra- improved rapidly. And I would say and Frank yeah, Reich sure. because he's he's utilizing Andrew Luck in the short pass and get the ball out quicker. You know, the, beforehand with Pagano, it was it was hold the ball and launch downfield every time. And so I think I think some of the play calling has protected Andrew Luck, made him a better, uh, safer option. Hilton is going at three oh two right now. Mack at 303, Luck at 502, Ebron at 611. Um, do you believe that, one, this will be a top-five offense, and two, whether Andrew Luck can repeat the 39 touchdowns? I, I believe yes on both. I don't necessarily have him down for 39, but can he? Yes. I mean, Andrew Luck has already finished as the number one quarterback in football before. He was drafted to do it. He has the most weapons he's ever had. I mean, he last year, his wide receiver, too, uh, I, I know, I know Inman. you guys have dun, dun, liked dun, dun, dun. Dontrell Inman. Well, that, that was the end of the year, too. He was a free agent addition because they had run out of people. They had nobody. But now, I mean, you look at the weapons, and not only do you have Paris Campbell as this electric speed Paris guy. Paris Campbell is great who can you know get it afterwards you've got a big target in Devin Funches that they brought in he's great at being big and now they have they have four big well, targets well he's tiny yeah Devin oh Funches yeah is, he's he's not the big man on Devin, the team sure Funches is a little tiny guy because Gigantor Mo <laughs> Ali Cox how much time am I allowed to spend talking about Mo Ali Cox 20 minutes <laughs> yes well we're gonna start a separate podcast so, sure it's now, called the Gigantor podcast yes. well, let me ask this the podcast is over eight feet tall. You guys are big fans of T.Y. T. Hilton's. Yes, uh, I, lo- I love. I love Hilton. the ADP. I was going to say when you said T.Y. Hilton three, what three hundred two or whatever. I was, yes, please. If you think I'm going to yes, pay for Tyreek Hill, pay up for Tyreek Hill where I can get Hilton at three hundred two. You're crazy. But do you, should there be worry here? The fact that if Funches and if Doyle's back and Ebron's there and Paris Campbell is there, T.Y. Hilton has been the only guy in town for long stretches of most of his seasons for Indianapolis, shouldn't those people cause T.Y. Hilton to no. not have the same market share? Not at all. Because T.Y. Hilton's fantasy value has never hinged upon touchdown efficiency effectiveness. He's always been a 6-7 touchdown guy at most. He's a yardage guy. I don't think those guys will have any effect on T.Y. Hilton being a go-to yardage accumulator in the offense. I don't bank on any – look – T.Y. Hilton to me is a guaranteed, if he's healthy, 1,300, 1,400-yard guy, and then you just roll the dice with the touchdowns and Andrew right. Luck. That's yeah. how I view it. I don't think this offense is any different from a touchdown threat standpoint. He's going to throw it to Ebron. He's going to throw it to Doyle. He's going to throw it to Moali Cox. But yardage-wise, Mike, do you have concerns? No, do you have I, any- I, I don't because Andrew Luck is a 4,500-yard quarterback with – in the mid 30s of touchdowns with the ceiling of of being even higher so no i I think that ty hilton is is absolutely locked locked in and he's one of my he's one of my favorite draft values at the wide receiver position would you be comfortable with him as let's say you go i mean 302 if i go rb rb exactly are you happy with him as your one i would be yeah okay all right um let's talk about gotta talk about marlon mack yeah let's talk about marlon mack and the running backs Let's talk about Marlon Mack and Naeem Hines. Mack, you know, what is his ceiling? How many carries do you expect? And then Hines last year had the 10th most targets for a rookie running back in NFL history with 81 targets, um, 29 first down receptions. It's interesting, though. I did see a little uh, a little weakness in Naeem Hines' statistical output that I noticed this morning. I like the fact that he's going to be targeted. But when you looked at like yards after the catch from the running back position, yeah, it's not great. It was not good. Somebody, you know, who's number one in football is Melvin Gordon. Melvin Gordon was better than Austin Eckler and better than everybody mm. else in the NFL at yards after the catch at the running back position. Naeem Hines was near the bottom, and Hines was—I mean, he was a product of opportunity. We talked about how the wide receivers were gone. 
Ooh, and, now and then, you're talking about Javoris Allen type stuff. And then Marlon Mack also missed a good amount of, of the season. So, I mean, Hines, I think his he will still be used, but I don't expect anywhere near the target share, especially with, with the addition of Paris Campbell where you, Campbell excels at getting the, the ball at the line of scrimmage and then making something happen. For Marlon Mack, after he returned from the injury, he was averaging 17 carries, 80 yards, and a full touchdown per game. But he was also only he was putting up one and a half receptions per game because Hines was the pass catching running back. Where that's troublesome for me is Mac will have to maintain his touchdown pace, in my opinion, to fully pay off of what his draft price is right now. So Jay, do you I mean with all of your huffing and puffing and getting hot and bothered about the Colts offense, do you think Matt can maintain that type of, uh, well, of he's a not touchdown gonna, production? He, he's not going to maintain a touchdown a game. I don't have him as a 16 touchdown guy, but I do think he maintains a great total <laughs> touchdown count on the season because he is their clear guy. If you look back at the season, we, we have to take context of how the Colts got off to such a terrible start. They were losing games. Andrew Luck was throwing way above his normal even even his normal high volume right. count then mac comes back they start running the ball they've got a good offensive line andrew luck goes to a lower uh, than his average on on a 16 game pace uh, passing attempts they win non-stop on the back of marlon mac and then they have all the extra picks in the world in the draft they don't go after a running back. They have the most cap space in the league. They don't sign a running back. And why? Because they have their running back. It's Marlon right. Mack. If he is healthy, I truly believe Marlon Mack is a great value. Like, I know we've talked about the the, the, the fourth-round running backs, carry on Johnson, and that's right. pretty much it. But to me, I throw Marlon Mack in there as a good value in the fourth round. Do I wish that he caught more passes? Yes, but he's not – one of those players that just doesn't catch passes, that's going to end the year with 12 receptions. He could end the year with 30, 35 receptions, and he's still he's not game-scripted out-out, although his production comes when they win games far more. But I have the Colts winning a lot of games. Sure. So if you're telling me I've got a, a guy who, once he was back from injury, we, you know his, his third game on was on pace for 277 carries. There's not a lot of guys in the league that have that. All right, we, we do need to get into the Titans and the rest of this division. But first, Eric Ebron. Is yep. double-digit touchdowns for Eric Ebron still on the table with the passing game additions? No, and not not at all to me. I think Eric Ebron will be one of the most disappointing picks of the this year's draft. He look, the, the, the natural regression, the tight ends who have put up a season of 10 or more touchdowns since the year 2000, it's, it's 13 players, and I'm not going to go through all of them, but the vast majority of their – Hall of Fame level players, tight ends that followed up that season with at least seven touchdowns the next year. It's only five players, and that's Gronk, Graham, Antonio Gates, Vernon Davis, and Tony Gonzalez. And we were talking about do do all the new weapons there hurt T.Y. Hilton? Andy brought up the fact that he's not a touchdown based guy, so he's going to get his yards. Whereas Eric Ebron was a touchdown based guy. If Devin Funches soaks up a couple, Mo right. Ali Cox soaks up a couple, you've got Jack Doyle back. Yeah, I mean, that he's going to take a hit at touchdown. And here's one more crazy Ebron efficiency stat. Eric Ebron had 12 red zone receptions. Eric Ebron had 11 red zone <laughs> touchdowns. So he caught the ball 12 times inside the 20, and 11 of those were touchdowns. He for did. You know what? He did it all for one man, and that would be Jason. <laughs> Thank you, Ebron. He had a magical season for one reason, and that would be the vote of confidence that Jason had in him from the beginning of, well, of his, yeah. of his in, natural in that, life. In that case, Marlon Mack, it's your turn. You do it for me this year. <laughs> Look, from just to throw this out there, because I, I think it's interesting. From week six on, when Marlon Mack got back, from week six to 17, that's most of the season, Marlon Mack was the running back eight in half-point PPR. Sure. And he's in the fourth round. All right, yeah. last last Marlon Eric Matt, Chris Carson. Oh, Marlon Ooh. Matt. Last last Eric Ebron. Carson stat. was much higher in that span. La last Eric Ebron stat in, in that stat he was not. 
uh, with touchdown reception leaders under with Andrew Luck under center, he had never had a player with double digit touchdowns. It was Hilton, it, like Hilton with seven, Hilton with five. You're saying for the Ebron factor? Yes. Okay. Ebron was the first one over ten. Tennessee Titans nine and seven last year battled through a difficult lost season for Marcus Mariota. Played with injury literally in every single game of the season. Had that ulnar nerve contusion. Probably didn't even say that right. Then a downward spiral of multiple injuries. Um, he had a stinger. He had an AC joint sprain. He had a strained oblique. He had broken ribs. He had a ruptured plantar fascia. It, it didn't go well. And they still ended up at 9-7. and seven. I think they're one of the dark horse teams in the NFL. I, have, uh, I like what they've done in the offseason addition department, adding Adam Humphreys. Who, by the way, I think caught the ball closest to the line of scrimmage of any wide receiver in football last year. Humphreys is well great help. for NFL teams. He will help A.J. Brown draft in the second round in a third-round investment on a guard. I like what they've done on defense. I think this team is sneaky good, but that doesn't always translate to fantasy football, and unfortunately I don't think it will at the wide receiver position. So let's start there. Corey Davis, A.J. Brown, Adam Humphreys, Taewon Taylor, are you taking any shots on any of these guys? You just named too many guys for a low-volume offense when it comes to passing the ball for me to get in on any of them because A.J. Brown and Adam Humphreys are going to take away some from Corey Davis. Corey Davis is going to take away a lot from those guys. There's too many weapons here. If there's one pass catcher that I might entertain – from the Tennessee Titans, it's Delaney Walker. Oh, old man Walker. Oh, old man. He's got his walker out, and he's doing fine. Uh, he, he's, you know, he's activated. He didn't land on the pup. Um, so because tight end is so bleak, and we've got a long history of older tight ends in their 30s still performing for fantasy, I, 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 would, uh, I would entertain him late in the draft. All right. All um. right. How about the running back situation? Yeah, that's Derek the big Henry, story. Deion Lewis, obviously you just talked about them leaving the field today. Does, no indications that that's a major injury. So let's talk about Derek Henry. Set the league absolutely on fire to end the year. They just kept handing him the ball, and it kept working. It didn't matter if everybody knew what was happening. But this is an offensive line that just lost uh, their left tackle for four games, uh, violating the league's substance abuse policy. Any concern for a slow start for Derrick Henry? This the, Their starting schedule is at Cleveland, then the Colts, Jacksonville, in Jacksonville, and Atlanta. I think everybody wants to know, what is the truth about Derrick Henry? Uh, I, I think the truth is he's a good running back, and I think they figured out how to use him, and he's going to be a workhorse back on the ground. But he does not catch passes. That's not his forte. I don't think he's... You know, sometimes there's players like Marlon Mack. Marlon Mack, I think, is a fine pass catcher. They just don't utilize him in that that way. I don't think Derrick Henry is actually a good pass catcher. I think he's poor at it, and they've got a great pass catcher beside him. So he's a guy that I think could end up with 15 receptions on the year, and that that kills you. I mean, that's one of those things where you can get game scripted out if you're losing, and if the touchdowns don't come or you 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 know you have inefficiency, which <clears throat> we've certainly seen from Derrick Henry plenty then you're you're completely hosed so that's why I'm really fearful to take Derrick Henry even though I believe they figured out the right way to use him and they plan to to I think they're going to run him into the ground so I mean where do you guys stand on Derrick Henry I the problem with the truth about Derrick Henry is you have to pay a lot of draft equity to find out and I'm not willing to pay that price it's like last year yeah, the end of the season was fantastic, but it's not like they didn't try it before for Derrick Henry. Week two, 18 carries for 56 yards. Week three, 18 carries for 57 yards. He had he had double-digit carries seven times or so before the big one hit at the end of the season, and, and things just went nuts. Where yeah, it, I don't, Is that Henry running against – Worn down defenses. I mean, like, there's a lot of variables. <laughs> if you look at the ultimate draft kit, the 2018 consistency charts, they look so weird with Derrick Henry because the entire it looks, first half. looks like half, a stoplight. The entire first half of the year is just completely red. And then the second half of the year is pretty much completely green. I mean, he started the year 57th, 41st, 42, 43, 43, 50. That's the rank among running backs. There's only 32 teams. Like, he was terrible. Yeah, it, it's 
a complicated situation. On the pass catching side, I can't put confidence in. Like, I don't want to take a shot on anybody except for looking at Delaney Walker at tight end, who seems like he's healthy. Jonu Smith is not healthy. Walker is a safety. Yeah, Walker's been great with Mariota. With Mariota and Mariota, man, last year there were eight starts he had where he didn't even throw a touchdown. Eight starts. I mean, until the passing offense proves something, Delaney's the only one that you look at and say, "Well, you know, I'm going to punt tight end. I'm going to grab a guy in the in the at the end of the draft that probably is not going to win me any weeks, but at least he's not going to lose me any weeks." And um, you know, I I'm not going to face Kelsey and Ertz and Kittle every single week, so Walker will get me by. That's right. that's probably the only passing game option I'm looking at. I'm not interested in Humphreys. Corey Davis's time has come and gone. He can have success for some other fantasy owner. He surpassed 60 no, yards he can't. <laughs> only four times last yeah. year. But he had a couple blow-up games where you thought, okay, this is it. This is when Corey Davis is going to turn the corner and finally become the player who the Titans thought they were drafting. Mac but and Henry no. we have at the same spot right now, our consensus. I would take Mac. Yeah, for you know where I stand. Okay. They're, they're, they're probably not as heavy of a run team as the Titans will be, so I was curious about where you'd be um, as of today. All right, let's talk about Jacksonville. Jacksonville starts at home against Kansas City. That'll be interesting. But Patrick Mahomes coming off an MVP season gets to go play that Jacksonville defense. And then they go to Houston. Oh, and- I'm glad you bring that up and, and because – Jacksonville's one of the highest drafted defenses out there because they're a great defense. <laughs> but don't do it. Do, do not draft Jack. Like that, just put mark that down. Yeah, just Get, don't they, draft them they at all. They held Mahomes under control more than any other team did last year. I am not starting <laughs> Jacksonville Week One against Kansas City. I don't recommend and it. And then against Watson. In week and then two. against Watson. Right. No, don't draft the Jacksonville Jaguars defense in your fantasy league this Pick season. Pick them up on waivers week three. And because, four, yeah. Because they play the Titans and then Denver. This is a whole new um, a whole new situation for Jacksonville. Did not work last year. Nick Foles has been brought in to uh, lead this offense. They gave him a lot of money. Leonard Fournette at the running back position. And then you've got a wide receiving core that's – Pretty up in the air. Uh, D.D. Westbrook is the only player on that offense at the wide receiver position that I'm looking at in drafts yep. at all. Um, high draft capital guy, talented player, explosive player, checks those boxes for a guy that could could you know be a nice sleeper breakout candidate. He was tied for fifth in broken tackles at the wide receiver positions. I mean, he, the guy can the guy can be shifty. Yeah, and then. You know, they have Keelan Cole. They got Marquise Lee. Marquise Lee's still on the pup Ugh. coming off the ACL. Keelan Cole, despite barely playing, still managed to almost lead the league in drops. <laughs> and then DJ Chark, uh, you know, he's a guy that has opportunity. They talk up Chris Conley a ton. I think Conley Conley's is play. interesting. I do too. Like when He's they... a physical freak. He just did not have that. It, it could be like Albert Wilson, right? Wilson didn't have the opportunity under Andy Reid, and they didn't pay him. Conley didn't have the under opportunity, but as a physical talent, he'd be the sneakiest deep league kind of guy. But I mean, come on. Yeah, it, yeah. It, there's it, it would be shocking. Deion Kane or Chris Conley? Uh, I'll stash Conley actually. Yeah. Uh, but but it seems it seems like it's a really long ways off. The question will be like the my biggest question for Jacksonville, especially knowing Doug Marone, knowing the the curmudgeon. The football curmudgeon that Tom Coughlin is. Why did they hire John D. Filippo <laughs> to be their OC? The guy that got fired because when the when the head coach wanted to run the ball more, he kept throwing too much. So when D. Filippo was the OC of Minnesota, which was almost the entire season, they were on a pace of throwing 645 times. In his earlier op- opportunity in 2015 with the Browns. They threw the ball over 600 times on their quarterbacks that year were Josh McCown, Johnny Manziel, and Austin Davis. So Filippo said, I'm not going to let the quarterback dictate how much I throw because I'm going to have him throw the ball over 600 times. Last year, there were only six teams that threw the ball over 600 times. I mean, like that's a, that's a number, that's a volume that the vast majority of teams never even think of crossing. Now you have... Two very opposed uh, uh, philosophies in offense. Who wins? Well, here, here's 
we bring it up all the time. Where did they spend their money? They spent their money on Nick Foles. They brought Nick Foles in. Right. Then they hired John D. Filippo. So they're gonna throw the ball more than better than they did last year, which makes Westbrook in the tenth very interesting. If you want to take a shot there, yep. a flex guy, I would be very surprised if he doesn't contribute in a big way, at least in the right matchups, in the right situations, and somebody else will probably emerge in that passing game. Yeah, I, when I look at the wide receivers, it's 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 too hard to make a bold prediction on for sure it's going to be any one of those guys. I would lean towards Didi, but the price of Didi says you can take the shot. It doesn't cost you anything to make that bet, and the payoff would be rather nice. Now, the real question when it comes to the Jacksonville Jaguars is Leonard Fournette. Yep. Leonard Fournette has been one of the least efficient running backs a lot's been made about that that he you know was so highly drafted so great in college comes in and hasn't been very efficient however that does not matter it does not matter if a guy's efficient un uh, is super efficient inefficient if unefficient he's, if he is <laughs> deficient de deficient a efficient regressive progressive uh, efficient ex exactly the point is he has been good for fantasy and been a high scoring fantasy option in the games he plays so it's injury versus a good fantasy option do you think he can stay healthy he's got a great offensive line fantasy owners would do well to just reappropriate what Leonard Fournette represents to your fantasy team in your brain if you can get him at a value and you no longer think of him as this anchor for your roster at the running back position then you're fine I think that's the truth don't think, think of him as in, good. as the top tier upper echelon you know, you've got more risk with injury, suspension, efficiency than you've ever had with him before, and you just have to factor that into when you get him and where you get him in drafts. That's what I think the, it comes down to. Um, I did want to throw it, circling back for just a second, if Marquise Lee can get healthy, he's the player with the money attached. He signed the contract sure. extension. He's paid eight point, uh, his annual salary is $8.5 million. He's got 16 and a half guaranteed, and he had a 700-plus yard season for this team. So I just want to throw it out there. Right now, he looks like you can't sift through the guys, but he's the one with money attached if he's healthy. Um, Jason, are you? do you view Fournette differently than I just explained, or is that how you're viewing him, or do you even get the privilege of viewing him that way because of his ADP? Uh, you know, it's one. I, don't, I think you don't get the privilege of viewing him that way because of his ADP. You've just got to take the gamble on the health because if he's out there playing football, he's good for your fantasy team. Over the last two years, here's a list of guys – who have a higher percentage of finishing the week RB2 or better. Saquon, Le'Veon Bell, Todd Gurley, Zeke, Melvin Gordon, Alvin Kamara, end of list. So it's just a matter of is he playing, and that's the gamble you're taking. Now, he used to be you know, one of those second-round type of picks. Where is he right now in ADP? That's Fournette is at 305. I you're mean, drafting him ahead of Freeman, Henry, Carrion, Jacobs, Montgomery, Ingram, L Lindsay. I mean, I'm never taking him over Carrion Johnson, but uh, I, I think – You I, would take him over over Devonta Freeman? So I see an injury risk with both of those guys, but I would take the offense of the Falcons. So no, I did I move Freeman him. down a little bit in my it's rankings fair. recently. I do wonder – you know, we talk kind of like, oh, my gosh, they didn't bring anybody else in to compete with Fournette. Really, right? They brought in Alfred Blue. Well, and they drafted, they drafted Reichwell Armstead. So, but maybe, maybe some of that has to do with the philosophical change on offense. Maybe it has to do with wanting to throw the ball more, not trusting Fournette to be the offense that got them. Look, they tried to two years ago. It worked. Great defense. Fournette pounded out. Maybe there, it's representative of like we're not going to invest more in the running back position because we're gonna we'll get what we get out of him, but we're gonna throw it a little bit more. I, you know, it's hard to say. Um, I don't think his – what's his ceiling, I guess, would be a nice way to finish that up. His ceiling is definitely a top 10 running back. Uh, so, uh, I mean, if he plays 16 games and ends up with uh, one of the largest volumes, he's not a hyper pass volume guy, obviously, like a Christian McCaffrey, but his 16-game pace yeah, last year still was caught 44 receptions. So, I mean, he's <laughs> he's able to – What is the judge <laughs> doing? I The judge just dropped a, a reception perception graphic. <laughs> Into our doc yeah. for Marquise Lee from 2017. <laughs> oh. I remember this. He, if you want to know what the opposite of a Michael Thomas is, Michael Thomas has green for every route run, the nine route, the post, the corner, the out, the dig, the curl, the comeback, the flat, this is the slant, the, success. the screen. Success That's the by success route. by route chart. This no. is part of the ultimate draft kit. 
Marquise Lee has read for he's below average at success by route for every route run in football. Seal would be happy. This is you a know kiss what, from a rose. Is this graphic? <laughs> anytime it I is, anytime I hear his name, I, cut, I, I, am I even this chart? Every am time I, I hear allowed his name. to blame Blake Bortles even though reception perception is supposed to carve the quarterback <laughs> out? Am I allowed to do that? Nope. Because mm -mm. I this feel like this is Lee. somehow Blake Bortles' fault. Still, that's incredible. Um, Anything else you guys want to touch on with the uh, the Jags? Or are we good no, to go? I think we're good. Pristine deal of the day. All right, a Marlon Mack signed NFL football oh. yesterday on pristineauction.com. Went for forty dollars. Nice, not that's, bad. That's great. I, I uh, really like Marlon Mack. I hope I'm he stays healthy. <laughs> but um, did you say I really like Kenyon Drake? Is that what you said? Nope. Oh, nope. Okay. Nope. I'm I'm fading. Um, pristine deal of the day. Make sure you check out all of their incredible deals. Use the registration code BALLERS for $5 towards your first sports memorabilia purchase. All autographs are authentic, and that is pristineauction.com. We've got the NFC South, the closeout divisional show on Tuesday. On Thursday, I believe we're in mid-round madness. Yep. Yep. And then we've got a mock draft. Oh, yeah. Mm. So a lot is happening Intermixed with all of that uh, content will be tons of news, notes, all the information, all the breaking news. Melvin Gordon, please sign a deal because we took you and Scotty Fish. That would be great. And, um, look, thanks for supporting the podcast. We appreciate you. Absolutely. And Los Angeles, we didn't forget about you. We will see you live next week. And five shows a week in August. Oh, it's yeah. coming, everybody. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Keel. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.